Hey guys and welcome back. This is Codamant. On the last video we did some bindings. Just basic bindings, binding to a text box and to a label. On this episode, we're going to go a bit more further into it and start binding to collections. So let's, this is what we worked on last time. Let's delete everything because this is pretty ugly and start over again. So with binding collections, we're going to need a grid. But not uh, just an, a grid like here, but an actual data grid. I believe it's called data grid. So we've got data grid, uh, which is going to take up the entire screen. We want some columns. So data grid dot columns. And then what do we got? We've got a text column template checkbox. Let's go with a text column. Header is name. So we've got a name header. We'll make the width star. And then we'll have a data grid checkbox column. Header is awesome. And we'll just make the width maybe a hundred for this one. So we're going to have a bunch of names <clears throat> and uh, another column called is awesome. So how do we bind, you know, make the actual data grid populate with actual items? Well, we'll need to use the item source. So item source is going to be a binding to data grid items. So in our trusty view model that we created last time, we'll get rid of our text and we'll create a public enumerable, we'll call this a data grid item. And we'll generate a file for that. And so we've got a data grid item over here. So our data grid item will have a public string name and a public bool is awesome. And we'll go back to our view model and we'll call this, what do we actually call it in our main menu? Data grid items. So data grid items, get set. We'll create, when our view model gets instantiated, actually no, we'll leave it at that. What's wrong with that? Uh, we'll create, we'll make our view model internal because we don't want the view model to be accessed outside of this assembly. Not that anyone's going to actually depend on this, but you know, why not? We've created the data grid items and we've got a data grid item with name and is awesome. So what do we actually bind to? So we go binding is binding name. And this one binding binding is awesome. Makes sense. So we're already instantiating in our view model a new view model and setting the data context. So we don't have to do anything else here, but if we want things to show up in our list, we'll instantiate it with a new list of data grid item. And we'll have a data grid item with name is codeman is awesome equals true. And we'll have another one data grid item name equals not codeman. And of course, is awesome is false, obviously. Let's see if that actually works. So F5 and jump in. There we go. How crazy is that? So we've got a little problem here. It is binding correctly, but those columns get added again. And that's because I think there's a setting called auto generate columns. And we'll just send that to false. If we run that again, we should see just the, just the columns that we've added at runtime. And it's really cool. We can actually just start to add stuff and like it's an actual usable grid, which is pretty, pretty awesome. But that's, that's easy. What I want now is two grids, one grid on the left, one grid on the right. And if you highlight something on the left, you can send it over to the right. So what we're going to need to do is have a grid with some column definitions. We'll have a column definition of width of star for the left, a column definition width of 50 for the middle and a column definition width of star for the right. So we'll get something like that. On our left side, we want the data grid that we have now on in the middle, we want a button. We'll create a, we'll create a, a stack 
panel orientation vertical. And we'll have this appear in the middle. Then inside that stack panel, we're gonna have a button called, called right or go to the right, whatever you wanna call it. And we'll have a button called go to the left. How do we escape that? So we go our trusty Google, how to escape in XAML, C sharp. Here we go. So to do that, we can just chuck it like that. So that's the thing about programming. You're never gonna know everything. Always use Google, that's half the job. Well, maybe 90% of the job really. We'll want uh, the stack panel to have the vertical alignment as the center, so they actually appear in the center. And then finally, we're gonna want another data grid. The grid dot column equals two, which will be on the very right side. And we're basically just gonna copy this. Grid dot column equals two. So now we've got two columns basically saying the same thing. Uh, two grids basically saying the same thing. Maybe we want to have the left list indicating awesomeness and the right list indicating not awesome. So we'll get rid of that is awesome checkbox for both of them. So we'll just have a list of names and then up the top of them we'll have a label. So we'll have a stack panel orientation will be vertical we'll have one label and this one will be awesome and then we'll have the data grid to take up the rest of the space under that we'll probably want this to fill the rest of the space so is that a thing vertical alignment stretch no all right we shouldn't have used a stack panel instead we'll use a grid and We'll get the rid of the orientation as vertical and we'll instead we'll have two row definitions. We'll have a row definition for the label, height 30, and a row definition height star for the actual grid. Now we just set this grid.row to one and then bam. And then we'll basically copy this over here, and this will have a grid dot column is two and then we can delete this data grid down here. Rename this to not awesome, and there we go. If we want to, want to make it look pretty, we make a label horizontally aligned to the center. Do the same for the label up here. Bam. Awesome, not awesome, and a list of names. Oh, also, I hate coding like this, so I'm gonna make it vertical. That way I can see all the code on the right and the actual UI on the, on the left. On our left grid, we want to have awesome people as its item source. And we'll have over here, not awesome people. Simple enough. All right, let's go back to our view model. We'll create this awesome people. We'll rename data grid item to, to person. And then we'll add another enumerable called not awesome people. Now the thing is, an enumerable does not support adding or removing, which we're gonna to have to do. So instead of that, let's change this to an I list, which does support those add and remove. So just to double check, binding to not awesome people and awesome people, bam. So now when we actually, we'll rename this also, to a person. So now when we actually click on this button, we'll add a click handler, and we'll call just new event handler, and we'll do the same for this. And then in our main window, you'll see we've got the button clicks. So button click, this will be move to awesome click and this one will be remove from not awesome click move to 
not awesome click and remove from not awesome click and so just to keep things named clearly we're going to rename this data grid items to awesome people and then we're going to create the not awesome people as a new list of person as well when move to not awesome is clicked we want to move the selected item of the data grid to either the right hand grid or move it back to left hand grid but first let's bind our selected item to binding sol to selected person for both grids and in our view model we'll create a public person selected person now this way we should actually get in the move to not awesome click the reference to the selected row so this dot view model dot selected person we'll check if that's not if it's null we'll just return otherwise we'll check if this dot view model dot awesome people dot not awesome people dot contains this dot view model dot selected person if it already does return we don't need to do anything otherwise we can go this dot view model dot awesome people dot remove this dot view model selected person and then add it to the right hand list not awesome people so let's give this a run this one surprisingly won't actually work the first go and i'll demonstrate why so if i click that and i put a breakpoint here on the move to not awesome click you'll see it does get the selected person code of n and not awesome people doesn't contain it if i remove it and add it you'd expect it to update on the ui but it just doesn't this is because we're using lists now lists have add and remove but they don't actually have they don't actually have a way of notifying the binding framework for WPF if it has changed. If we want that to happen automatically, we just change it to an observable collection. Now, I don't have to change any of my code because I've been using iList, a generic interface. And then, so we've changed it to observable collection now. Let's have a look if it works this time. Code man, click. Same thing, goes through. Oh dear, I think what's actually happened is when I move this over, selected person is that, but the second time it's null. This is because I've bound to selected person. So what we want to do instead is make it a local variable just by doing this. That way we go remove person and then add person. Now this should actually work, hopefully. Boom, there he is, Codeman's over there. And not Codeman is over there now as well. So we'll do the same thing down below. So basically we copy this. If awesome people already contains the selected person, we get it. We'll remove it from not awesome people and add it to awesome people. So let's have an, another look. Codeman goes over. Not code man goes over, code man goes back. And there you have it. That's binding with collections. I'll see you next time on the next code man video. I'm out.